In this moment, there are over 40,000 Canadian children living in foster care, and thousands of them age out of the system each year. For example, in BC, this year, about 1,000 youth will transition into independent living when they turn 19 years old. And unfortunately, this transition into adulthood is full of challenges for them. We know that they are less likely to graduate from high school and to get a post-secondary education, and they are more likely to become homeless, to be involved with the criminal justice system, and to be in need of financial assistance later on. I think this quote from a youth who was formerly in care reflects this very well. Here he is not only talking about the great challenges that he's faced, but he's talking about how his safety net, his support network, is just smaller than that of other people his age. That is why the main goal of my program of research is to help improve the supports that are provided to youth who are transitioning out of foster care and into independent living as adults. And I am doing this work because I believe we can do more. I think we can do more as researchers because we have spent a lot of time and effort conducting studies that show all the risks that these youth are facing. But we haven't really spent the same amount of effort generating rigorous evidence that help us develop new supports for these youth to find the solutions to all these issues. And I also believe that we can do more as a society because we have given our governments the power to take away children from their homes when their families are not doing well enough. But when they become adults, we kind of just forget about them. <coughs> and this is problematic in many different ways, especially considering that today over 60% of Canadians who are aged between 20 and 24 years old are still living at home with their parents. Yet, we're asking some of the most vulnerable youth in our country to take care of themselves on their own when they're still technically teenagers. And this vulnerability, it comes from their entire life history. It comes from whatever type of abuse and neglect they may have experienced as children. It comes from being taken away from their families. It comes from their experiences while in care and during their transition out of it. And all of this feeds into increasing the risk for a number of adverse outcomes. And this includes, in particular, their mental health. We know that young adults who have been in foster care are at higher risk for developing anxiety and depression and more severe disorders, such as schizophrenia and bipolar. And that doesn't include substance abuse disorders. And when talking about how mental health develops over the life course, it's very important to note that recent advances in psychiatry are telling us that these disorders that are usually diagnosed in late adolescence actually start showing up in early adolescence. And this is key, because this tells us that if we screen or intervene early enough, we may be able to change the trajectory of these disorders. We may be able to delay their progression, to uh, decrease their severity, or even to prevent them altogether. And these interventions, which could be implemented while youth are still in care, don't need to be just about providing medications. They can be focused on resilience. They can leverage the youth's strengths and their culture, and they can provide them with tools that help them empower themselves to manage their mental health as they are growing up, instead of waiting for a crisis to occur. So now I'm going to stop for a second, because I've given you a lot of information. I've told you that youth who have uh, been in foster care face great challenges when they are transitioning into adulthood. And I've told you that they are at higher risk for developing mental health disorders, but that these disorders may be changed in the trajectory with early intervention. What I'm interested in is how all of this connects. Uh, the question I want to answer is what is the role that mental health plays in this transition into adulthood? for youth who have been in foster care. And that's what my PhD thesis is about. My project has two stages. The first stage is all about numbers. I want to be able to quantify the extent to which mental health disorders explain all of these other adverse outcomes that we observe in adulthood by comparing youth who have been and haven't been in foster care and those who have and don't have a mental health disorder. 
I'm going to be doing this by looking at data from the entire population of the province of Manitoba. And this data is going to come from all these different administrative databases that we're going to link. Well, I would love to be able to conduct this research in BC, unfortunately, some of these databases are still not available here. But maybe for a future postdoc, who knows? <laughs> While all of this is extremely valuable, I'm also convinced that when conducting research in this area, it's fundamental to include the voices and the stories of youth who have been in the system themselves. That's why the second stage of my project involves talking to you and asking them what they think has been the impact of their mental health on their transition into adulthood, what they think about the current systems of support and how to improve them. And thanks to the Public Scholars Initiative, I'm going to be able to implement this stage in partnership with key stakeholders, which include youth and those who work to support them. My hope is that the results from my study will not only help us fill this gap that we currently have in our knowledge, but most importantly, that it will help inform future services and programs developed for youth to support them as they transition out of foster care and into independent living as adults. Finally, I would like to tell you just one thing about myself. As a hobby, I like to take pictures of wildflowers. This one is called a fireweed, and it gets that name because it's the first plant that colonizes the soil after there's been a forest fire. Thank you.